Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, that's what
that crushed me. I'm just sitting here like, man. You know, and my mother, the oldest, out of all my aunties and uncles. And it's hard out there. You got people with master degrees and been to college and can't even get the job they supposed to get. So everything for us paying your rent and bills, everything is tight. So have in mind when you out there game banging and you get killed, you know, a lot of people, if you ain't got insurance, they ain't gonna wanna come up with the money. But if you got insurance, they worrying about what they can get out of your insurance to, to be able to keep their head above water or just on some being greedy. Things like that, and it's sad. And I, I'm, and I'm, I'm crushed because I'm just sitting here like, man, I wasn't even prepared for that. And all I could do now is pray and hope that, um, you know, my family, you know, come together, take pictures, and, you know, let me see how my cousin kids look, and you know, some of my grandkids. And, you know, my kids. And um, another thing I want to speak on is I want y'all to really, really think about this. When you out there living this lifestyle, you got to have in mind you can be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And people who ain't trying to go to jail, they got these new laws out here. And you can just easily be caught up at the wrong place at the wrong time. And if y'all ain't on drugs or high, even the gang members, it's that Willie Lynch letter. You should read it. And really, really think about what he's saying and he had a vision on that and we got to change that vision where we can unite and love each other and care for each other because the way things are today he right to a certain degree but we just need more people to unite but i really wish that y'all read that letter when y'all ain't high, y'all ain't no drugs, and look at the world today. That's why a lot of us need to come together as people, love each other, embrace each other, because you never know when somebody gonna die. And when my uncle died, that just, I wasn't prepared for that. And it's a lot of things I wish I would have done with him I didn't get to do. And now all I can do is, you know, sit in my cell and, you know, remember all the memories that I don't have with him, all the things we done, all the things he let me get away with. And it's painful when you're in here and certain people in your family die and there's nothing you can do. And you just sit here and you got to deal with it. And when you got all this time, pressure break a pipe. And I'm letting you know this also, for all y'all that's, that's out there killing each other, a lot of the people that's out there in the world a lot of that stuff ain't happening in their neighborhood, so they don't care. They really don't. You know what I'm saying? The way people die left and right in all of these cities today, and, and people, kids getting killed, because a lot of kids, they can be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You don't even, a lot of kids, they can't even play outside because there's so many people doing drive-bys and things like that and, and people don't even know how to use a weapon 
they come through, and then when they do come to shoot, they want to look cool when they shoot the gun. So they take it and lean it and shoot the gun. Like that's cool. And then that's how innocent people get killed. You see, you got you to gotta be mindful when this kind of thing happened, and everybody be like, man, why is this going on? Why is this going on? But see, have this in mind. A lot of them want that to happen because they making a lot of money off of us in these jail systems. How do you think a lot of them got their houses? How do you think when their kids graduate from school, they get a Porsche or a Benz or an Audi how you think they get a $1,500 a week allowance? Because they making money off of us. But see, now they want this gun control because there's too many innocent people getting killed and they tired of it. But they need to let people like me and other people that live my kind of lifestyle out of here that change their lives, that been in these groups that better they self. It took the Ortiz family, it took the healing circle um, in San Francisco where these parents would come in, mothers and fathers with their obituaries and pictures and the um, reward signs of their kids that was killed 10 years ago, eight years ago, and they're still stuck on what happened to their kids. And here it is, I'm sitting here like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And it made me think about all the families I heard, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's sad because when you living in a gay lifestyle, you don't think about that. All you think about is revenge and getting even. And that's it. You see what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of you kids that I can reach from the bottom of my heart, y'all don't need to live this lifestyle because we done all that stuff for you. But we the same people that need to get out here and show the little youngsters out there that's coming up today that that ain't cool. That's why I'm thankful that I took up auto pain and body when I was in Sidney Allen State Prison. When 9-11 happened, yeah, I was part of 9-11. The Border Patrol in Mexico, they was making barriers and they took them 90 days to make one barrier. So welding shop, they made two a day and we painted two a day. So I wanted to get good at painting cars with my right hand like my left hand, because I'm left-handed. So I started painting them barriers with my right hand. We did so many of them barriers to stop the terrorists from crossing over to Mexico to the United States. They came to visit us with the um, El Central News Channel, and they interviewed us. And that was the most positive thing I first done when I got locked up in prison. And I was happy about that. But see, now that I've been in that trade for four years, I know how to take a car down to the metal, etching primer, primer, paint, clear, them brand new paint jobs on them brand new cars y'all see today. I can do that like it's nothing. And these are the kind of things I would like to show a kid. Instead of y'all out there trying to show y'all down for your gang and all that, Nah, man, let me, let me show you something where you can be able to take care of your family. Let me show you something that where you don't get caught in a spider web because when you hang around people like me, all you going to care about is getting in trouble and having sex with women and doing drugs and drinking. And then you're going to lose who you is as a human being. And that's why I'm thankful that this prison blessed me to be able to give back to y'all. And I just want y'all to know that there's no better feeling when 
you networking with kids, you networking with these families, and you getting the results back that you didn't think you would get. I don't care how many shootouts I've been in. I don't care how many dudes came by doing drive-bys, shootouts, or we getting in fights at a school, a picnic, a carnival. Don't, didn't, don't none of that add up to where how I'm doing now, where these kids that's in gangs come in here and I help them, and then they go get kids in their gangs and be mad. Watch this game presentation Kiki got. Man, Kiki um, show me this and that and this and that. And he know how I think. And he been in jail 19 years. Remember, I was your age once. Remember, I've been in the gang since I was 11 years old. I'm 43. So I know all that stuff. You see what I'm saying? And that's all I know. But I'm thankful I got my education. I'm thankful I'm in these self-help groups. I'm thankful that I'm a Christian and all of that. But still in all, I'm just thankful that I'm gifted in this area to help you use. So y'all don't be out there blind, man, because, man, I'm broke up right now. I lost my uncle. And I'm not there for the funeral. My cousin died since I've been locked up. The first time I did three and a half in Soledad. My dead cousin, little Michael Ray, may his soul rest in peace. He's four years old. My grandmother died. My cousin died in 1990. My cousin, I mean my grandmother died in 1992. Now my uncle, since I've been down these 19 years. And I should have been there. Just like I should have been there for my kids. So that's why I'm sharing all this with you. Not to get you to feel sorry for me or none of that. But to get you to see that ain't nothing cool about being in here. Because when you out there, you winning. And you run into opportunities. You limited in here. Because it ain't nothing in here. This is a waste of your life. So you use out there. I really want you to. Grab on what I'm saying here today, and I pray and hope that um, y'all take me serious. God bless you.